are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid, so let your light shine. It seems like this thing called following Jesus, it all starts with one choice, one decision, one belief that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the Son of God. That's where it starts. But every day thereafter is another decision, another choice. Am I going to follow Jesus today? Or am I going to go my own way? And so when we sing that old song, I have decided to follow Jesus, it's not just talking about that first step toward following Jesus, which is belief, but it's also talking about every step thereafter. How do we follow Jesus daily? In the book of Exodus, chapter 32, we read of a whole nation of people who were following Moses through the desert. They got a little concerned when he goes up on a mountain and he doesn't come back right away. They don't know what's happened. Uh, They fear he may be gone forever. They don't know that God is meeting with him, giving him the Ten Commandments. And so they revert to the means of worship that they know and understand, which is an image a golden image, an idol. And you know the rest of the story, how Moses comes back and there's a bit of chaos in that moment. So what are we to take away from this story? We definitely see in the Ten Commandments that you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make these idols. But remember, God was giving that to Moses on the mountain, even as the the children of Israel are making idols. So they hadn't even heard the message yet. We need to hear the message still today. We might not make these statues, these images of other gods to worship, but idolatry can be anything that you put in the place of God in your life. So what is it for our age? What is, what are the idols that we follow in, in the 21st century? I think it's ourselves. We often put ourselves in place of God and in place of the other people that we are supposed to be loving. Remember the greatest commandments Jesus said is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. How often do we put ourselves above our neighbor and therefore above God? That's something we need to hear. That's a message that we need to hear. The lectionary text this week put together Isaiah 25 with this Exodus passage. I'd like to share it with you today. This is really a hymn of praise. We don't have the music for it. Uh, but Isaiah 25, O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure, for you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. If you need a little context, when it says aliens, it's really talking about some invaders Uh, and so the children of Israel later on in their lives were frequently attacked by outsiders uh, by invaders who would come and reduce their cities to heaps and so this is a song of reversal watch for this reversal Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you, for you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of the invaders like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds 
the song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Let us be glad and rejoice. In order for there to be a time of rejoicing, we have to lean into that great reversal there. In verse 4, For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. We have to be a part of that. We are called to be a part of that. And in Greek, the word for church is not a building. It's not not even uh, a group gathered together. The word literally means the called out ones. Ecclesia of the called out ones. We are called to lean into this way of life, to follow Jesus by reversing what the world does. The world builds systems that keep the strong and powerful and the rich in their place and to keep the poor in their place. Whether it does it on purpose or not, it happens. That's what this world does. We are called to a reversal, to this refuge to the poor. That's That's what we're called to. That's what Jesus was all about. That's what this Old Testament passage even is calling us to. And so we have to look for ways to bring that to life. And then we become God's agents of change in the world. We are following Jesus with the way we live our lives, not just what we believe, but how we live. That's what we're called to. And so I want to share, uh, this, is, this is a commentary uh, on the lectionary text. And uh, this is a passage from Miguel A. De La Torre, who uh, is writing on, on this set of passages. And he says, if our God is a refuge to the poor, then the hymns of praise we sing on Sunday are vain If we ignore the poor, if we insist on building walls to keep them out, if our God is a refuge to the needy in distress, then our prayers are hollow. If we support cutting social services to bless those who are already super rich, if our God is a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat, then we proclaim our lack of faith by ignoring the image of God in the homeless. The church ignores the cry of the poor at the peril of ceasing to be chosen. We are a chosen people only when we choose to follow Jesus with how we live our lives. Be encouraged by that message and see every act of kindness, of good faith, of generosity, of making the world a better place. That is you following Jesus. Another commentator writes, Isaiah 25 is a hymn of praise and thanksgiving. It reminds God's people that worship is central to identity. The Lord alone is worthy of praise because of the salvation that God enacts for God's people in the world. Praise reminds God's people of the greatness of the Lord. 
Our world revels in cheap grace and cheap praise. Today, media elevate persons simply because they are famous for being famous or based on cults of beauty, myths of success, or temporary athletic prowess. Verse 1 challenges readers to imagine anew what it means to praise the Lord for God's act of salvation on behalf of persons desperate for what only God, a God as great as the Lord could have accomplished. In particular, the basis for the praise is the grand reversal of circumstances envisioned in verses 4 and 5. The Lord does not enrich the wealthy and fight for the powerful. This text is good news for the downtrodden, the forgotten, and the marginalized. God is an anchor, a refuge, and a shelter Isaiah challenges both the church and the world to reevaluate the metrics used for success and failure. It calls for a critique of any use of power that merely blesses the current winners. It reminds the church of God's work of liberating the marginalized from any status quo system that suffocates the poor while appearing rigged for those already in power. So let us choose to follow Jesus every day. Let us look for ways that we might be God's agents of change in the world to turn around the lives of those who are on the margins, who are on the edges of society. For many of them, it does not take much to make a big difference. There are billions of people in the world who live on less than two or three dollars a day. Wow, what a difference in their lives a little bit of money uh, could make. What a difference it could make if we were a voice uh, for change, a voice for paying attention to their needs to making a difference in their lives. If you feel downtrodden, one of the ways to raise you up is not only to continue to, to praise God, to find a way to praise God, but to look for a way to pull someone else up who might be down. And in doing so, you, you raise up yourself because you become aware of your active role as an agent of change in the world. Every little thing you do matters. We must cling to that hope and that knowledge that, yes, we are making a difference. We are following Jesus with our lives and not just with our belief, but with the way that we live. Go with God, my friends.